Today we are going to start talking about what's called the unit circle. This is a huge concept in trig, and we will be referencing the concepts memorized with the unit circle for the next few months. The sooner you memorize quadrant one, the easier your life will be. I have a note up here that there are lots of unit circle quizzes first quarter. And when I say lots, I mean almost every day we will start with a unit circle quiz. So you really want to spend some time committing what we're talking about in this lesson to memory. So first of all, if we think about any point that is on our unit circle, or on our circle rather, let's say I had an ordered pair right here. And let's say that this point was equal to the ordered pair for 3. Well, if we were to look at those x, y, r values, we would say that x is 4, y is 3, and r is 5. Well, we learned the other day that whenever we have a triangle, we can always scale it down to get another triangle that is smaller or bigger, um, as long as the sides have the same ratios and the angles are equivalent. Um, so that being said, we could take these x, y, r values and we could rewrite them so that r is equal to 1. And then that would give us, we would do that by dividing everything by 5, so x would be equal to 4 fifths, y would be equal to 3 fifths, and r would be equal to 1. This right here would give us a point on what we call our unit circle. And our unit circle is a circle with the center of the origin and the r value equal to 1. Now if we look at any point that is on this circle, and this is a little bit off, if I were to look at this ordered pair, that ordered pair would be equal to 4 fifths, 3 fifths. All right, now if we look at our original x, y, r values that we started with, if we were to find the cosine, the cosine, which is x over r, would be equal to 4 fifths. And the sine ratio, which is y over r, would be equal to 3 fifths. Hey, what do you know? The cosine ratio of the original point is equal to the x value of the scaled point. And so for this reason, whenever we have a circle, where the r value is equal to 1, any point on this circle, x, y, represents the cosine of that angle, comma, the sine of that angle. Now, this is kind of a big picture idea. I'm not going to ask you to scale down all of your x, y, r values. But what I want you to understand is when we talk about a unit circle, and we talk about r equaling 1, and we talk about an ordered pair, cosine theta, comma, sine theta, just want you to understand how they're all kind of interrelated. Okay, so another big idea that we're going to be building on today is the idea of 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. Now you learn these back in geometry, and we had to memorize our patterns. And you probably saw your triangles in this scenario. Well, as we know, our triangles don't look like this. When we draw them, we are going to have the, let's say our point is right here, then the triangle that I draw is going to be drawn with respect to the x-axis and look like this. So if I happen to have my 30, de 30 degree angle, let's say right here, then as I draw this in, I have my 30 here and my 60 here. Now we just talked about the whole idea of the unit circle and being scaled down. Well, when we think about our 30, 60, 90 pattern, the way that we memorized it in geometry was that this was a 1, this is a root 3, and this is a 2. So this is what I mean when I say we are not going to take every side length and scale it down so that r is equal to 1. We don't need to do that. Um, I just wanted you to be aware that that is what we mean when we talk about our unit circle having a radius of 1. All right, so this being said, if I were to ask you to find your secant or tangent or cotangent ratios of a 30 degree angle, we would want to visualize this image. And we would want to say, okay, for this image, my x value is root 3, my y value is 1, my r value is 2, and now I can go ahead and find any angle that I want, or sorry, any ratio that I want. So when we're working with a 30, a 60, or a 45 degree angle, we can draw the triangle in, we can fill in our patterns, associate our x, y, r's, 
and then we can go ahead and find the ratio specified. Now, that process is pretty time consuming, and that's part of the reason why most people just memorize their unit circle rather than having to draw out all of their triangles each time. If we were to do a similar drawing for our 45, 45, 90 triangle, in this case, x's and y's are the same, hypotenuse or r is root 2, and so my values are going to be that x and y are both 1, and r is equal to root 2. So in the example of question d up here, if I ask you to find cosecant of 45 degrees, we're going to say, okay, cosecant is r over y, therefore that gives me root 2 over 1, or just root 2. All right, so I don't know about you, but I really don't want to have to draw triangles every single time I have to answer a unit circle question. So for that reason, we build our unit circle for first quadrant, memorize it, and then we can apply that for every other quadrant in our circle. So let's take a look at that on the next slide. First, we're going to go ahead and we are going to focus on the 30 and 60 degree triangles. So if I were to draw in this triangle right here, this is my 30 degree reference angle. If we fill in our side patterns, we have 1, root 3, and 2. Now if I go ahead and look at my 60 degree triangle, my 60 degree triangle, ah, move this out of the way, my 60 degree is going to be up here. There's my right angle, and my side lengths will be 1, root 3, and 2. So one thing that I want you to notice is that the radius is always 2, and the 1 and the root 3, they basically switch sides, depending upon if the shorter side is on the x-axis or if the longer side is on the x-axis. Now from here, I can find the ordered pair associated with this angle on my unit circle. Now we said a minute ago that all of these ordered pairs are going to be written as cosine theta, sine theta. So if I look at my 30 degree angle, my cosine is x over r, my sine is y over r, then I can say that my ratio for 30 degrees, x over r is going to be root 3 over 2, and then y over r is 1 over 2. Now when I come over here to my 60 degree angle, and I do my cosine, x over r, I get a 1 half, and my sine, y over r, I get root 3 over 2. Now I want to point out to you, we talked the other day about co-functions, and we talked about how co-functions such as sine and cosine are equal when their angles are complementary. So what does that mean? That means that cosine of 30 degrees is equal to sine of 60 degrees. And if we look at this, cosine of 30 is equal to sine of 60. Similarly, cosine of 60 degrees is equal to sine of 30 degrees. Hey, check that out. Cosine of 60 equals sine of 30. So what you want to remember is that your 30 and 60 degrees, your ratios for cosine and sine are either 1 half or root 3 over 2. The one that is bigger is determined by if, you're trying, if the angle has a longer x side or a longer y side. Now the other special triangle that we learned about is the 45, 45, 90. So let's take a look at that one. And we'll do that on one of the circles down here. So for our 45, 45, 90, that's going to be this middle point. For this triangle, the side lengths were the same, 1, 1, and root 2. So now when I go to do x over r, 1 over root 2, I need to rationalize that. So I times it by root 2 over 2, I get root 2 over 2. And when I go to do y over r, I have the same values because x and y are equal. So for a 45 degree angle, both cosine and sine are going to equal root 2 over 2. And this further goes along with our co-function identity we learned the other day, that if the angles are complementary, the co-functions are equal. All right, let's go ahead and put all of this together on one circle. And that's what this guy at the bottom is here for. So if we go ahead and put all of this together on one, here's what we're going to see. 
And again, we're just focusing on first quadrant. We are going to see root 3 over 2, 1 half for my cosine sign. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, root 3 over 2. And that's going to be for my 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree angle. Now if you think about what we talked about the other day, we talked about how my cosine function starts at 1 and at 90 becomes 0. And we talked about how our sine function starts at 0 and as we approach 90 increases to equal 1. Here's a cool little trick I like to use to help remember these, um, these ratios and how they behave. So we said the other day that my cosine ratio goes from 1 to 0 and my sine ratio goes from 0 to 1. All right, so using that idea, we can think of 1 is the same as root 4 over 2. And if we look at this, my ratios for cosine go from root 4, ooh, root 3, root 2, root 1, root 0. Pretty cool, huh? Now if we look at sine, sine starts as 0 over 2, and then it goes from zero, like root 0, root 1, root 2, root 3, root 4, all over 2. So if we can remember which one starts at 1 and which one starts at 0, we basically know that they're kind of taking turns. One of them is getting bigger while the other one is getting smaller, trading places along the way. Alright, so that's how sine and cosine behave. To finish this up, we talked about how tangent is equal to the ratio of sine theta over cosine theta, also equal to the ratio of y to x. So there's two ways that we can calculate our tangent ratios. The first is that we can divide the fractions. The second is we can go back to the ideas that we looked at above and we can find the y to x ratios. So why don't we take a look for our 30 and our 60 degree ratios and see how the tangents turn out. So for my tangent ratio, y to x is going to be 1 over root 3, which when rationalized gives us root 3 over 3. For my 60 degree angle, y to x is simply root 3 over 1, or root 3. And when we get to our 45 degree angle here, since x and y are the same, my tangent ratio is 1 to 1, or just 1. So if we add that to our quadrant that has everything, and typically we will see our ordered pairs written as cosine theta, comma sine theta, and then tangent theta off to the right. So if we um, continue in that mindset, at um, 0 degrees, we talked about the other day how tangent's equal to 0, at 30 degrees, tangent is root 3 over 3. 45 degrees, tangent is 1. 60 degrees, tangent is root 3. And then at 90 degrees, tangent is undefined. Because tangent starts at 0 and gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And then as we reach those angles close to 90, since x gets to be so small, when you divide by something really small, you get a really big answer. All right, so here's what we want to do. We need to memorize this. The sooner, the better. Because once we know, for example, cosine of 30, then if I ask you for a secant of 30 degrees, you just flip the fraction. If we can get this first quadrant down, we're going to be golden. All right, that's it. Homework for the weekend, Math Excel, and memorize this unit circle.